The continent of Asia is not only a geographical region with well-known historical borders. It is much more than this, as the great economists predicted a long time ago that Asia will be the continent that will lead all the continents in the future, and Napoleon Bonaparte emphasized this while talking about China, let China sleep, for when she wakes, she will shake the world. This is the topic of Parag Khanna's book, The Future is Asian, which shows us that Asians see themselves once again as the center and the heart of the world, and the center of its future too. About 60% of the world's population lives in Asia, 10 times the population of Europe and 12 times the population of North America. The Asian economy presents about 50% of the world's GDP and two-thirds of the global economic growth rate. And it was found that only $1 trillion of the estimated $30 trillion growth in the middle-class consumption between 2015 and 2030 is expected to come from Western economies, and the rest will be from Asia. Also Asia produces, exports, imports and consumes more goods than any other region. The Future is Asian by Parag Khanna If we look at the traditional academic historical writings, we always find that they talk about the weakness of civilizations that pass through history such as the civilization of Mesopotamia and the Pharaonic civilization, and others. Which means that the image of non-Western societies is always presented in a way that shows that these societies either were contiguous with the West or came into contact with it. But the life of Buddha and Confucius, the legacy of the Mongol Empire and the maritime adventures of the Ming have always caused confusion in its study or teaching. And this is a natural result of this Western and European bias. Also the Asians themselves are ready to erase or delete some of the crimes they committed against each other. And we must know that Asian history cannot erase the West in the same way that the West wants to erase the history of Asia. Referring to ancient history, we can say that the emergence of human civilization began in Asia, where farming tools were invented, animals were tamed and forts and settlements were built. The Bronze Age also witnessed the emergence of the Akkadian Empire and its successor, the Assyrian Empire. And the routes of wild trade and culture extended to China, and there are many other achievements that indicated that history began in Asia and will end there. Bit to remember, there is a Western-oriented policy to hide the bright aspects of the Asian history. We cannot see this great amount of the achievements of the Asian continent and its history that is full of successes, discoveries and epics, unless we find ourselves impressed of this history and the lessons learnt by its events and details. And if we want to talk about the cultural aspect, we will mention here the ties that connected Asia, which were represented in trade, conflicts and culture. The ancient Indian Sanskrit was the template for Thai. In East Asia, the Chinese writing system moved to Japan through Korea. Arabic also became the basis for many languages of oral traditions, such as Persian, Pashto, and Urdu. In addition, trade and conflicts created favorable conditions for the exchange of ethnicities and lineages through temporary settlement and marriage. Ideological diversity was also a decisive factor in the stability of Asian civilization, as the emergence of Brahmanism, Zoroastrianism, Shintoism, and Buddhism before the emergence of Christianity and Islam in West Asia. It is also impossible to explain the South Asian culture without talking about the major role of Islam, which was caused by Arab merchants through the maritime commerce. Bit to remember, the history of Asia is a symbol of a culture that is characterized by diversity and difference. Just as Asia was the cradle of civilization, it was also subject to divisions as a result of colonialism and the Cold War. But what is noticed is that the interdependence is gradually returning to Asia and all its regions have started to tend towards a common center. For example, the Russian state. This country has always had Asian interests, starting with confronting the Mongols and maneuvering against British colonialism in the 19th century, to challenging the Qing dynasty and defeating Japan in World War II, and upsetting the balance of the Korean and Vietnamese wars. This confirms that Russia's depth was and still an Asian depth, despite all the predictions that were saying that it would fall into the trap of the Western world. 
What confirms this is that Russia is preparing to be a pillar of the Asian system, when it accepted Chinese investments in the oil, gas and mining sectors in the country. And this is to make those sectors serve China's demand more effectively. Bit to remember, interdependence gradually began to return to Asia and all its regions began to tend towards a common center. There is an economic rule that says that either China will shake the world or it is on the verge of a dramatic economic collapse. What matters here is that the slowdown of the Chinese economy does not present a relapse in the story of Asia. As while China's growth is slowing, other countries are experiencing accelerated growth, as if we will witness a third wave of modern Asian growth that began with Japan and South Korea, and then China, and now it is the turn of South Asia. What supports Asia's collective resilience is the cumulative success of five decades of integration started by Japan, and later the economies of the Asian tigers. As the wealth of Asia increases from one generation to another, and with the increase in the local production of goods and services, the weakened currencies, and the decline in commodity prices. Asians buy things with their currencies at much lower prices than Westerners pay in dollars or euros. Also, the per capita share in China is similar to that of Russia or Brazil, not as in America or Britain, and this is precisely because Asian societies focus on maintaining high rates of employment and keeping the cost of living affordable for everyone. There was a deep conviction among the Westerners that the Chinese economy will collapse, but none of this happened. Bit to remember, the Asian economy has been growing constantly and cumulatively for five decades.